Hey everybody and welcome to the next edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog. It's been a really busy week for me. Some highlights of my week included spending a full Sunday shooting videos for the online version of our Soccer Fitness Trainers course, which I'm working really hard to have ready and available for any of you who are interested by April of this year. And also later on in the week, yesterday actually, it was my 36th birthday. And although I did have to work on my birthday, I did get some pretty sweet presents uh, from clients and, and their parents, including a chocolate cake, as well as this awesome happy early birthday card from the younger sister of one of the athletes who trains with us. So if you're watching, thank you very much, Melinda and Matthew. Another really cool thing that happened this week was that the UEFA Champions League kicked off the first leg of the round of 16 matches. And there were some really exciting games, including a couple of blowouts. One that wasn't really surprising, which was Bayern Munich beating Arsenal 5-1 in Munich. Another one that was a bit of a shocker, which is Paris Saint-Germain beating Barcelona 4-0 in Paris. Uh, however, today on the blog, I'm going to be discussing another very exciting game which involved an interesting strategic and tactical battle and it was between Benfica and Borussia Dortmund. So it was a close game and Benfica won it by a score of 1-0 but if you look at some of the statistics from the game and uh, we'll put them up here you can see that Borussia Dortmund actually had more ball possession they had more total shots and they also had more total shots on target and typically those are all good indicators or predictors that one team is going to be successful in a game over another uh, but as I mentioned this particular game involved a strategic and tactical battle and one thing that's very interesting about it was that it highlighted something that I think is not always clearly visible to uh, a casual observer and that is that oftentimes teams, when they're coming up with a strategy and tactical plan, they will plan to change the way that they play based on different periods of the game. And something that's quite common is that a team will plan to play a certain way in the first 15 minutes of each half and then completely change the way that they play over later periods of the half. This is done for many reasons, uh, one of them being that in general players energy level and the balance or the ebb and flow of the game and the amount of energy that players can expend is not always the same so it's difficult to keep a certain level of performance and keep things consistent throughout the entire game uh, and a lot of times which I think also was the case in this game it's a specific tactic used to try to catch an opponent off guard even if they're stronger than you. So what did Benfica specifically do during the first 15 minutes of the first and second halves that caught Borussia Dortmund, who were probably the stronger of the two teams, off guard? Well, they played those two 15-minute periods the way that Dortmund played the rest of the game. And that is, they applied high pressure in the attacking third of the field, preventing Dortmund's talented midfielders from having any sustained sort of possession and trying to win the ball by forcing errors from the Dortmund defense in a dangerous area of the field. In the first half, it worked okay for Benfica. Their winger, Salvo, went on a few creative dribbling runs down the right and they did earn a quick corner. But in the second half, it worked even better, where they earned two quick corners and on the second one, Mitroglu was able to capitalize on a defensive error by Dortmund and score the only goal of the game, which was in the 48th minute, just three minutes after the start of the second half. So it's interesting that for the remaining 30 minutes of the first and second halves, Benfica played completely differently than they played in the first 15 minute periods of those halves, and that is that they defended a lot deeper, they kept their defense very tight, they allowed Dortmund to have a lot of possession and they only looked to counter sporadically. And again, to a, a casual observer, it really may have looked like Benfica were lucky to get the result that they got because they got outplayed. 
However, if you dig a little bit deeper, you can also see that there was some pretty good coaching and a pretty good tactical plan by uh, the Portuguese manager, Rui Vitoria. I think he probably knew that they weren't going to be able to open themselves up and play that kind of high pressure against Dortmund, who's a superior team for the entire game. But he probably banked on the fact that Dortmund were not going to expect them to try to do that at the beginning of the first and second half. Overall, it's an interesting lesson for younger players and younger coaches. And I think it's something interesting to look for when you're watching games to try to see not only what type of strategy and tactics the teams use overall, but try to see what types of changes they make in the different periods of the game. So thank you all for watching this edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next week. And until then, keep reaching your soccer fitness goals.